Hello again. Welcome back to Asgard and welcome to um, what's going to be kind of an ongoing tutorial spotlight series for the Between Lands mod. And so whenever new content gets added, new updates are added, then we're going to update, um, you know, what's going to be this playlist for content because Triple Headed Sheep was wanting kind of an in-depth up-to-date tutorial. I've done a few tutorials in the past for Between Lands, but nothing quite comprehensive for the Between Lands. And of course, I was wanting to do this for like Tales of Alora um, because it's so heavy of a Between Lands start um, for whenever that comes out and things like that. Um, so we're going to be doing a very comprehensive tutorial for the, for the Between Lands. So in this first episode, we're going to be talking about the basics and the mechanics. How do we get to the Between Lands? Um, and then once we get to the Between Lands, how do we deal with things like player decay, tool corrosion, and food sickness? And also bear in mind that um, with pretty much the stuff that we're going to be covering in this episode, it's all very configurable um, within the config. So certain packs may not have all of these features enabled, um, and things may be a bit different depending on the pack that you're playing, but these are all basic mechanics for the Between Lands and how it works. So anyways, how do we get to the Between Lands? The first thing that we need to do is we need to find a swamp biome in the overworld and we need to find this structure right here. This is a dark druid altar. And what's going to happen is whenever we get close to this, it's going to spawn uh, these creatures called dark druids and we're going to need to kill them in order to um, get talisman pieces to drop. And of course, I've got a fight here that's in the water going on, but um, what we're going to do is kill these guys off, and they're going to drop talisman pieces. Um, now their main form of battle is tossing you, so if you have fall protection, if you have um, water nearby, or if you fight kind of underneath a tree like this, um, it's going to help you out a lot because, yeah, see they're going to lift me and they're going to throw me, but being under the tree I can only be lifted so far so any of those methods will work i mean you can build an arena for them but it's really not necessary um, but i do suggest you have some decent armor for fighting them because they do hit kind of hard and you are going to have to kill a few of them now after a while you'll finally get four pieces you may get some duplicates and stuff like that um, so just a heads up but once you have these four different pieces of the swamp talisman you're going to go over to the altar and you're going to place these out order doesn't really matter um, and once you get them placed out this is going to happen and there we go there's our swamp talisman and then we can just pull this out of here so once you have that the hard parts over um, basically just finding a swamp biome is really the hardest part and then what you're going to do is you're going to place um, just a sapling down and just right click on the Swamp Talisman. And it's going to create this portal right here. Um, and you can use this. I mean, this is infinite use. Um, so once you have one, if you want to farm portal blocks, it's easy to do so. Just place a sapling, make a new portal, and tear it down. It's not going to make a portal on the other side in the Between Lands or vice versa as long as you don't enter it. So then once you have your portal up, let's go ahead and pop through. And you're going to find yourself in the Between Lands proper. Um, this is actually one mechanic um, we'll talk a bit more about later, but this is amulets. Um, we're not going to cover it too much this episode, but just bear that in mind that that is important, that little colored amulet that's spinning around that swamp pack there. Just so you have the full effect, because it actually has a really cool transition effect um, it actually causes your screen to um, slowly turn and, and one thing to bear in mind look make sure and keep an eye on the stake and the potions at the bottom right um, what's going to happen is when you go to the between lands with potions and with stakes um, from the overworld with default configs they're actually going to rot and you're going to end up with tainted potions and rotten food rotten food is going to give you hunger and poison and tainted potions, I've never actually drank one, I don't know, poison. Uh, poison and elixir of decay. Um, decay we're going to talk about in just a minute. Um, now if you go back through these portals, and I'll just go ahead and set myself to creative, um, 
with default configs, um, it's going to turn your food back uh, into its proper food and your potions back into their proper potions. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, you can disable that if you want food to stay rotted. Um, so just to be on the safe side, I wouldn't suggest that you take a whole bunch of really high-end potions and a bunch of really high-end food with you into the Between Lands your first time um, just to be on the safe side because you may find that it rots and it stays rotted. But once you're in the Between Lands, um, your food's rotted. Torches, if you place these down, they become damp torches. And whenever you have damp torches, you have to smelt them to get them back into the regular torch version. Um, but they don't necessarily rot or anything, but um, they really aren't any count. Also, diamond swords and things like that are going to be pretty useless in the Between Lands because you'll notice they swing extremely slow. And you can see that it takes me three hits to kill a Mire Snail. Um, whereas if I had just a Weedwood Sword, I can kill it in two hits. So a wooden sword is better than a diamond sword in the Between Lands. Um, and the same is true for tools and stuff. So I suggest once you get to the Between Lands that you get proper Between Lands equipment um, as soon as possible. Now next up we have what's called Decay. And if you take a look again at the bottom right, you'll see I have those brown balls above um, my hunger shakes. And that is player decay um, and as you run around and do stuff in the between lands that's going to start draining down now um, this right here is stagnant water um, you won't generally find this above ground too often but we'll talk about this a bit more in a future episode um, but stagnant water is pretty common underground you don't want to fall in this um, it's also present in a couple dungeons, so just bear that in mind whenever I mention stagnant water. And if you fall in this, it gives you Elixir of Decay effect. And what, what that does is it causes your decay to swiftly drain down. And you'll notice that as my decay goes down, my maximum health goes down to a minimum of 3. And this is my maximum speed when my decay is down. So that's something that you want to bear in mind and kind of avoid getting your decay bar down. So how do we get our decay up? It's actually fairly easy. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to look for very specific trees. For starters, you're going to want um, sap trees. Let me find one here real quick. They're pretty easy to spot. Right there is a sap tree. Um, and if you take an axe to this, let's grab ourselves just an axe. And let's go break this down. Of course, I've been popping into creative, so I get my my decay back. But as I break this, I get what's called sap. Now, this is your general purpose method for getting your decay up. You can eat this, and you'll get back one ball of decay. Um, now, there's other better ways, but sap's going to be your starter way. Um, next episode, kind of the getting started tips and stuff, um, I do highly suggest you shoot for... Um, sap jello as quick as possible because once you have sap trees and you can grow them and you kind of get started you should be able to go get sludges pretty easily and capture them um, and I'll show you a little setup to make that pretty easy for you um, so you're gonna look for those sap trees and once again this is what they look like I have night vision turned on at the moment um, this is what they look like and sometimes when you're first getting started you may confuse them with nibble twig um, nibble twig is not a bad tree. We're going to talk about it next episode. It's actually a good source of starter food, depending on the biome that you start in. But um, sap trees are really the go-to. Also, if you find weeping blues, they're great. We're going to talk about those next episode as well. Um, but I highly suggest you shoot for sludge jello um, and then sap jello pretty quickly. Um, but anyways, you can eat the balls of sap and you can get your player decay back up that way. Um, it's pretty easy to tell in the between lands what does decay and what does food because sap, it says heals decay pretty much. The majority of things that will heal your decay will say heals decay. Now, weaving blues are kind of unique because they say taste good. If you see where it says it tastes something, it may not taste good, um, but it'll be like taste good or I can't eat this anymore, things like that. Um, 
you're going to know that that's a food, right? But Weeping Blues do have a side effect where they pretty much give you the opposite of um, the Decay debuff, where instead your Decay goes up and it lasts for 30 seconds. So we'll talk more about those next episode. Um, but that's pretty much the basics of Decay. You don't want your Decay to run down, and it will it will passively run down, so you're going to need to keep your stockpiles of sap up um, to combat that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is food and food decay, or food sickness. Um, so as you eat foods, like I said, you can see that they say taste good here. But let's grab ourselves some sap jello. It heals decay and it tastes good. And it's one of those things that you can eat pretty much all the time um, as long as your hunger or your decay are down. Like right now I can't eat it because my hunger's maxed, my decay is maxed. Um, but as you eat things, um, let me go ahead and nom down on some of this stuff real quick. After I eat this enough times, it's going to become less effective. There we go. I should probably try finding something different to eat. And you can see it tastes plain now. And after I eat it a bit more, it's going to say I'm, um, I need to find something else to eat. Um, and I think the, the sap jello will say I can't eat this anymore. Um, you can still eat it. It still will give you a little bit of nutrition. And, it, and even once the nutrition value decreases, like right by default, sap jello restores, I think, two shanks of hunger. Um, but if you run it down to where it says, I can't eat this anymore, it only restores a half a shank of hunger. So your food will progressively become less and less effective the more that you eat it. Um, and just eating a variety of foods isn't going to fix that. Like if I run this down to where I can't eat this anymore, um, and then fried swamp kelp, I eat that down to where it says I can't eat this anymore. Um, it's not going to change the sap jello. So switching things up, isn't really going to change things. What you need is Chiromol wings. So right now the sap jello says it tastes plain. Eat a Chiromol wing. It says I think I'll be ill if I eat any more of that. Um, blah, blah, blah. And you can see that now the sap jello tastes good again. Especially once you reach late into between lands, you're probably going to be eating a lot of sap jello or white pear jello or Meyer snail scrambles, maybe nettle soup, it's a pretty good one. Um, but the Meyer scrambles, the wheat bean blue petal salads, things like that. Um, you'll be eating a lot of the top tier foods. And so you'll want to eat chiromol wings on occasion to keep the nutrition value up. Um, if you eat one chiromol wing, it resets all your food values. So it doesn't just restore one or anything like that. It resets all your food values to taste good. Um, and chiromol wings are super common. Um, if you go in the between lands and you spend, like, there's a Cairo Mall up there. Uh, you spend five seconds in the between lands, you're probably going to get jumped by a Cairo Mall. Um, they're one of the most common mobs. So it's not really a big concern, but something that you do need to be aware of and keep in mind. Make sure um, to eat those Cairo Mall wings. So that pretty much covers the uh, food sickness. But, it, of course, if you guys have any questions about anything that we cover, let me know down in the comments or on the Discord, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. Um, also, the between lands has a... Um, official Discord, um, which is a great place to stop by if you want some sneak peeks on things and, and whatnot. So, and then the last thing I want to talk about is corrosion on um, weapons and tools. Um, this only applies to weapons and tools, and for the most part, it mainly just applies to between lands based weapons and tools. So what corrosion is, is as you run around, as you use your tools, as you swim, things like that, um, they're going to get what's called corrosion. And basically, if you take a look at the Valnut Sword, it says good as new, and the axe says good as new. Um, a good rule of thumb is you'll know as soon as it takes its first bit of damage, it'll say it can be used in the purifier. Okay, and actually let me get a purifier as well. Um, we're going to cover the purifier a bit more later on, but I do want to cover uh, talk about it a little bit this episode. Um, so as you run around, your tools are going to get corrosion on them. And um, when they say good is no, that means there's not a whole lot of corrosion. That little bit of flavor text will change as they build up corrosion. And each tier of corrosion is going to decrease the, efficiency, the effectiveness of your tool or your weapon. It's going to decrease the damage of your weapons. It's going to uh, decrease the speed of your tools. So you do need to be aware of that and just keep an eye on it. 
So, um, how do we get corrosion? Um, basically, just running around with a tool or weapon in your inventory. If it's in a chest, it's not going to build up corrosion. But basically, the kind of the harsh environment here, um, even though these tools are acclimated and these materials are acclimated to this environment, this type of environment still has like wear and tear on your equipment. Now, just running around, it's going to be a very slow buildup for um, your corrosion. I remember reading on the wiki a bit back, and I want to say it's about 5% chance per second that your tool or your weapon may take one point of corrosion damage if you're just running around. Um, now, if you're actively using the tool, like breaking something or attacking something, it's going to increase that by a small amount, um, or it's going to multiply it. And then if you're in the water, that's the worst thing, is if you're in the water and you're swimming about, it's going to drain corrosion even faster. I think it's like a 12% chance. And then if you're using the sword or the tool, it's going to be close to about a 15% chance per second that you're going to get a point of corrosion. Um, which I know it sounds pretty bad, but um, they have, I want to say it's a thousand points of corrosion before they are totally corroded. Um, a, a, basically a thousand points of corrosion durability. Um, before they're totally corroded. But we do have a couple ways that we can combat tool corrosion. Uh, the first up is the purifier. And what we can do is we can put sulfur and swamp water into this. And um, as you can see, the ancient grade sword can be used in the animator and the purifier. Animator is used for durability. We'll talk a bit more about that later on. But if I throw the ancient grade sword in here, um, it's going to start running, and basically what's going to happen is it's going to clean off all the corrosion. So that's the first method, and um, just kind of upkeeping your weapons, keeping them clean, keeping that corrosion off, um, is going to keep them working in tip-top shape. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can get Scabist, and we'll talk more about this in the third episode, but you can take Scabist and apply it to a tool. Um, so you can see like the Ancient Greatsword, barely any coating left. Um, with one scabist, two scabist is slightly coated, three scabist, and actually four and five scabist are all moderately coated, and this is uh, well coated. Now, even though um, this is well coated as well, the flavor text, the flavor text is just a general amount um, within so much of a range. You do kind of have a durability amount. Um, I believe it's a thousand points for both. Um, so you'll have a thousand points of base corrosion durability and a thousand points if it's completely coated with eight pieces of scabist. And you can add scabist as it wears down. So if you want to upkeep a tool and you're out exploring, just carry some scabist with you and throw that coating back on, reapply that coating every so often uh, to keep your weapons and your tools in tip top shape. Um, because trust me, I've been in the situation where I'll go to fight a boss and I won't have my coating fully applied and you know maybe I'll get it worn down or something and I'm not doing maximum damage and it is a bit game changing. So it's not something that's really difficult to upkeep um, because like I said Scabist is super common, purifier, easy to run, very cheap to run. And once again that only applies to tools and weapons, it doesn't, it doesn't apply to your armor and your shields and things. So make sure and pay attention to your decay. Make sure and pay attention to your food sickness. Make sure and pay attention to your tool corrosion. All three of those things, very, very important. Um, once again, those are configurable, so some packs may not have um, all of them or certain ones enabled um, at a given time. But that's default config, and that's general um, between lands mechanics that you need to be aware of. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap up this first episode here. These episodes will be variable lengths based on what we're covering and how long it takes to cover. Um, and there is going to be quite a few episodes. So next episode, we're going to be covering getting started in the Between Lands. You've got into the Between Lands. Day one, what do you do? How do you survive? Because a lot of people have issues with they don't know how to get food. They don't know where to go about getting food. They get it in their head that certain biomes are bad to start in because there's not a lot of food available. However, there's food available pretty much in every biome. Um, sludge Plains, definitely the hardest one to start in, <laughs> depending on where your portal takes you. But uh, I'll be showing you next episode how to get by your first day. What do you do? How do you make tools? Um, I hope you guys learned something new. 
and I hope it helped, especially if you're like new to the Between Lands. I hope it helped you out a lot. And I also want to say a really big thank you to the Between Lands team for just putting together such an amazing mod. Um, you know, I've been playing with it since it was very, very early in development back in 1.7. And even back then, it was a very unique, absolutely wonderful mod, and it's only gotten better. So, and I will say, I know there's huge things on the horizons. That's pretty much the norm for Between Lands. There's always big things coming up and in the works. Um, so, I can't wait, and I'll, you know, I'll continue updating the uh, the series as things come out and everything. But, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button, and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.